I remember thinking, without sounding too sort of doom and gloom, I, I don't have, if I, if I step outside of this, mm -hmm. I'm gonna sort of fall apart. Been dying to ask you this. I was like, your reveal in, in this film that with the you know the, your spine bent back. Yeah. How the, how the hell do you like, <laughs> like the way you're the way you're standing? It's like such an impact. Like oh, how great. did you how did you like craft that? Like it was. <sighs> but I tell you what, like it was a kind of mixture of like, stuff. Like it was like in that thing. We be there for quite a while. Like we, sometimes we'd be like, okay, hold on, I stand. Just I need to come back up. <laughs> but it was um it was a really physical role, and we kind of yeah. was probably in the best shape ever been for the role, like Justin was was like, you need to kind of transform for it. But a big part of that was we were working out, there were a couple of different entrances, and initially, the very in one draft of the script, which we didn't go with in the end, was the, you were gonna, Ned used to work at a, a, a sawmill, and it was oh, okay. as a wood chopper. Yeah. And there's this amazing thing, if you've ever seen tree felling, mm -hmm. where they, and I learned, I went, tried to do it for a week, and it's gonna, it would have taken months to learn properly. But this this amazing champion tree fella in Tasmania, where I went and lived with Justin and Nessie and learned how to chop wood, because it's this amazing thing where you watch people they chop a hole in the, in the wood, in the tree. Sorry, put a board in like a six foot plank, then chop another one, put another plank in, stand at the top, chop half the tree, go down, do the same the other side, and chop the top of the tree off. And they wanted to try and do that real time, and we just wow. didn't have the budget and the time. Oh. So, but the way that they chop wood with an axe was this is amazing kind of gesture where they move way out like that, like and it was kind of like this dance. And so, other than the back bend, there was this version where he's trying to warm himself up and mm -hmm. just trying to show his kind of his muscles. Basically, yeah. we were going to do this kind of chopping wood yeah. thing, but we opted with a stiller version, just, which was just bent. Back. Just bent back. Just, <laughs> just bent do back. the limbo. Just be like, well, he's a kind of like really striking, reptile yeah. man sort of thing. I watched a, an interview with Nicole Kidman recently, and right. she said she she loves being in films that are like weird right. and outlandish, um, and, and that's the ones that she like goes for. Would, yeah. would you say what's, what's your opinion on it? Yeah, I think it's funny. I watched her. I watched Cold Mountain last night. Oh yeah, I've never oh, seen yeah. Cold Mountain before, but it was great. Um, yeah, I think in actors and in work, uh, like the actors that I most look up to, the one consistency is is variance in their work. If you uh -huh. know what I mean, yeah. like where you can't place them, they, they don't, they never do a type of film. They're just always different mm -hmm. in either the form the film takes or the characters that they play, yeah. like Joaquin Phoenix yeah. or. Yeah, Kate I mean, Blanchard. and speaking of characters, I mean, like, do you, like you know, you've you've played such a variety. Do you ever like? Mess your characters when you have to give them up. Do they ever like come home with you almost like, oh, uh, you know, so and so would be doing this right now? Yeah, it's really yeah. funny you say that. Like, yeah, definitely, definitely. I think, and Ned, Ned was one of them. Ever just like, like, want to shoot a cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, ever just, you come home after Ned Kelly. So, some of those, like, <laughs> Ned's had some dangerous, I've had some bad thoughts with Ned. Like, it was, no, it's more like Justin was like, I, I think I get quite English sometimes, you know, you want to be oh, like, yeah, kind of please yeah, and yeah. thank yous and uh -huh, all that stuff, uh -huh, yeah. which is important. But but Ned, uh, but Justin was like Ned. He was like, don't don't give anything away. He said, I want uh -huh. you to start practicing, right? Being unreadable and feeling the power uh -huh. of that. Yeah, and I just felt like, that from the film. Like it, it just like you could just jump out the screen and strangle. But that's the thing, of, and like, that kind of thing of it's a sort of yeah. protection mechanism as much as like you know you don't know what I'm thinking uh -huh, exactly, you know, and yeah. making someone feel it uncomfortable really with that silence. It. Some people think he was, you know, like the Australian Robin Hood. He had such a, a folklore behind him. Uh, you know, so many people think different things. Mm. What's your opinion on, on what he did? I don't... I... With, with, from, the, from the film, and this isn't just like a... I don't mean this just to be a politician's answer, but the, the kind of the point of the film is like, what is true? Mm -hmm. Like, that history is told by the winners and we appropriate you know, we appropriate the truth to be what it, we want it to be. And it's made me really kind of wary of yeah. of making an assumption as to mm. who that man was. I think it's tricky. I would like to believe, I un doing the historical research, I can understand how, you know, and like, uh, from from this kind of, the, from this, the life that his dad had when he, from yeah. when he got there, mm -hmm. from the hard life that he would have come up against, how and why he would have reacted to certain situations the yeah. way that he did. But similarly, if my dad had been one of the cops that he killed, I don't think I could level with him as a yeah. folkloric hero. Well, so yeah, I mean, I mean, speaking of the research you did, like, what, what, what kind of other sources did you draw upon to actually create the character? I'd say Conor McGregor was a big one. Well, <laughs> really, like genuinely, like Conor, 
the sort of the body of Conor McGregor and the kind of machismo and that swagger yeah, and uh-huh. that sort of like don't come in yeah. sort of well, I didn't actually that's right like, but that's <laughs> yeah. that because wow. also before we decided to make him Aussie we were going to play him Irish uh-huh. because he would have been had an Irish probably accent. had an Irish yeah, accent uh-huh. but they wanted to make it more contemporary and so we mm-hmm. we let go of the history and made him Aussie uh-huh. but yeah, Conor McGregor was a big like sometimes especially in the boxing scene at the beginning yeah. Justin like we'd be improvising uh-huh. like trash talk to the crowd and he'd be like give a bit more Conor <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're right off the presses in 1917, um, like, and it kind of have you know had much turnaround between the you know the two films. Like, what what was it like to, to play such a drastically different character from, in, in a, such a drastically different film? In all honesty, it, Ned came first. Ned, really? I, we filmed True History of the Kelly Gang, and I auditioned for 1917 just when I got home. Right for 1917, and it's just because the process of editing. Mm. With with Ned, it took it was a much longer edit, and then also because it didn't have a release date set because yeah. it's an independent film, mm-hmm. they then had to get it into festivals, and then once it got into festivals, then it got distribution, and now it's coming out. Whereas 1917, because it had it had a release date before we begun filming, yeah. we were always sort of streamlined into mm-hmm. that that period of time, and also because it's we filmed it broadly chronologically, and uh-huh. the nature of those long takes, we rehearsed it for months, but actually. We sort of had a rough cut the very yeah. the final day of shooting. So it's really interesting, it's like watching both side by side. They're such different films, you know. They've got so, yeah. so many different things to say. Uh, yeah. you know, it's really it must have been hard to, to transition, though. Yeah, it it was. But to be honest, it, d- sorry, like doing <laughs> doing um uh, doing Ned taught me a huge amount about Schofield. Like when uh-huh. because because the Kelly Gang is quite a intense film. During the last sort of few weeks of it, I remember being so kind of emotionally and physically mm-hmm. exhausted, I remember kind of, I remember thinking without sounding too sort of doom and gloom, I, I don't have, if I if I step outside of this, mm-hmm. I'm gonna sort of fall apart. So I can, wow. I can only, I can only do this, I can do this, no bother, that's fine. But if you ask me about home, if you ask which is where I wanna go at the minute, yeah. if we talk about it, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to not be able to carry on. And that's, so I was feeling that, and then about a month later I auditioned for Schofield, and there wasn't a script, but the the first scene that I had to audition with was the scene where Blake's kind of going, tell me about home, tell me about home, tell oh, me about home, right. and he's going, no, don't make me, don't make me, don't make me. And I knew that because I knew that feeling.